Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to my top 10 Skyrim homes. Yes, Skyrim has over 18. Can you believe it now if you've bought the Anniversary Edition or you own all the Creation Club content? So I asked you guys to comment your favourite homes and the 10 that I saw the most would go through to a final vote. We've done the polls now. Check out my community tabs if you want to see more details. And let's get right into top 10 homes of Skyrim. Kicking off with Mara's Pond, that's location for the Gallows Hall. It's a pretty involved quest to get it, which I've already shown you guys how to, and it does have a brooding location, that's for sure. Once you're inside, you won't be able to escape until you finish the quest, but not too hard. This place is perfect for necromancers and dark mages, perhaps. Like all houses, more or less, they have alchemy tables and at least enchanters, but this one has a very special use too. It can convert great soul gems into black soul gems. Even if you don't bother using a lot of soul gems, you can convert them and reap the rewards. The value goes from 100 to 300 for each soul gem once you've done this. And it's one of the two most unique things about this place. Has to be said, it's not the prettiest. There's plenty of debris and obviously skeletons and coffins lying all over the place. But it does have a working forge. You'll be able to craft, refine and improve all of your weapons here. Although it doesn't actually have a proper smelter. Keep exploring and you come to a central chamber which is meant to be the master bedroom and it's the only place that you'll find a few display units to put some of your weapons on the walls. Severely lacking is this location in terms of showing off your armours and your weapons. With only six or so mannequins in the whole place. But it does have plenty of storage in terms of chests and bookcases and a few display cabinets as you go further down to its other unique factor. Summoning permanent undead. Yes, it's got one of these converters where you place the right ingredients and you can summon forth Wrathman, Bowman, and certain other undead creatures, which initially appeared, I think, under the Dawnguard quest line. Close to Windhelm, so not too bad for survival, but for sure, its lack of being able to display your weapons and items a bit more thoroughly does let this place down. So certainly worth a visit if you are a mage or necromancer build and definitely take note of that summons area. Really surprised to see Headroom in the actual top 10. For me, it's just a very basic city home. It has got one of the largest storage areas and a decent armory, but nevertheless, compared to all the most recent homes added, it's definitely under par. It's also a pain in the butt to actually unlock. I still had trouble and I didn't actually get a chance to get full footage of the completed house as it was just taking me too long. First, it's exploring Windhelm and finding the clues to discover a secret killer in amongst the locals. You actually get a chance to explore Hidden without all of its decorations before you can actually buy it as that's the location of where a famous butcher is carving up the locals. Now there's some conjecture whether or not you don't actually have to complete the Blood on the Ice quest beforehand. In fact, until you complete five extra additional quests and go through some of the Civil War quests, you still might not be able to unlock this home. I reckon it all relies on helping out the locals of Windhelm. From everything I've seen, people having problems and issues with this in the past, that's what was required. Once I completed Blood on the Ice, it still didn't give me the option, and I even started doing majority of the Civil War quest line. So you definitely don't access this house too much later. It can also cost from 8 to 12 grand to buy initially, and then another 9,000 to 10,000 to fully upgrade. So let me know if you're ever unlocked after completing Blood on the Ice, or helping out five locals. I think this has got in here because so many of you guys just haven't explored the rest of the homes yet in Skyrim. Number eight is the Dwarven home, basically. It's far, far north of Riften, so it's a bit out of the way, especially for a survival let's play. It'll be a pain in the butt getting across to certain locations. It does offer a huge amount of space, but it's actually so wasted. You do have these unique Dwarven shells that you can place items actually manually on, but it doesn't have enough display units, only a bare few minimum mannequins and not enough weapon racks. So there must be something you guys like about it. Is it the roleplay possibilities? It has got a full-blown blacksmith's, although not an all forge. It does contain a wood chopping yard, and it has got some unique features with the steam pumps going up all over the place, even its own sauna. It does also have its own smelter, which is somewhat unique amongst some of these homes, and it's just got oodles of space. So maybe you're someone that doesn't mind decorating manually, popping and dropping stuff all over the gaff, but for me, it's such a waste. There's just way too much room to be running around all the different rooms and just not utilizing a lot of the space. 
It has got what you'd expect though, including obviously alchemy and enchanting room, and of course a oven and a decent cooking spot too. I do like the dwarven display cabinets where you can put some of your cogs and stuff, and it does have that specialist alchemy room for itself. It's almost like a spa with not only a sauna but a hot tub area also. So if you're someone that lives and breathes a bit of roleplay then you may enjoy this as a dwarven or underground home. One other unique benefit is it does have plenty of plant boxes so you will be able to grow a bunch of different crops in a special room for this area too. And hands down it has got one of the most impressive feasting halls in the game with this huge dining table in this massive hall. And a little weirdly, I guess dwarves like to have steam hit them while they're sitting down. It is a pretty location, the architecture is stunning, but I really am failing to see why this is so popular and why it managed to get to number 8. The quest line for it does have you repairing the area so that you basically tidy stuff up by unlocking some of the dwarven spider bots to go and basically clear up all the cobwebs up top. So it has an annoying thing where bandits will spawn in the Frostfall cave entrance quite periodically as well. Also, it's a bit of a waste there's an underground section with these ruins of some of these dwarven machines that you can't do anything with. I thought it would have been cool to maybe have it as a training area where you could maybe summon some of them to get some skills or level up quite easily and cheesily, but nope, none of these features actually work other than the original spider bot that you have to activate. So please do tell me why this actual base is one of the favourite homes of Skyrim. Now hands down this next place should have been higher, it might be down to me, I accidentally called it Chill Wind Cavern in the pole, even though some of you guys had already told me it was Blood Chill, because to me this is one of the best homes in the game, I can't believe it was only number 7. Maybe because it's quite advanced or you have to side with vampires or take out some pretty tough vampires that I know a lot of you guys had problems with, that some of you guys haven't realised this is somewhere that you can actually live. But in a stunning setting inside a huge cavern you'll find the manor with all sorts of rooms going off with heavy emphasis on dark and gothic. It can be a little bit too dark in certain areas but there's no doubt about it it's got some really nice rooms. Obviously an oven and cooking, bucket loads of storage and all sorts of chests and wardrobes and it's got a huge amount of mannequins. Not only lots of mannequins in displays all around to different rooms but a huge special built display room too. It's even got a creepy kids room where you can go and get some of them creepy dolls. The master bedroom also is home to a arcane staff enchanter, one of only two inside the homes in Skyrim, so this makes it even more worthwhile having this place if you're a mage or a magic user. I will say it now, I reckon this is probably one of my top three homes in Skyrim. Even the coffins in this place are more luxurious than we found in Gallows Hall. With a decent amount of display cabinets as well, it really is one of the better homes for displaying all of your goods and it does contain all of the other mod cons you expect. It also has plenty of weapon racks and a fully working forge area too and its own unique little dungeon. If you've ever wanted to get Lydia maybe a bit tied up then you do you, just make sure you've brought your ball gags. But the main display chamber itself is stunning. This gets converted from a feasting hall when you first do the mission. You come back and I do believe it turns into this and it's just amazing. It's got so many mannequins all scattered around. Absolute bucket loads of space for different weapons and it really has got everything you need to display. Especially if you are part of the Dawn Guard or maybe a vampire and you've completed some of the quest items. It's even got special homes for some of them. Obviously the masks are a big feature and pretty much all of the CC homes display a lot of the these items. There's only maybe one that doesn't display the actual claws which we'll get to. So hands down this is absolutely one of the better looking display units for me or rooms all in one area and just got a nice vibe to it. And on a more practical note it still has planter boxes to grow crops as well as wood chopping as you enter and exit the place. Maybe the only slight negative if you view it that way is that it's a little bit north as a home but it's right bang in the middle of Dawnstar and Winterhold College. And maybe in survival mode this is a pain in the ass to get to, particularly with that cold debuff. Also I guess it doesn't have anywhere really nice for your horses with no stables either. Now I don't want to keep telling you guys you're wrong in your top 10 that you voted, but I can't believe that Breeze home was better than some of the other homes. This is obviously one of the first city homes that you'll encounter, so maybe it's nostalgia for a lot of you, that's why you like it. Eventually when you can buy it from the Yarl Steward, you can upgrade it with a few minor small things like an alchemy lab. 
but that's pretty much all it's got going for it other than of course it being in the center of obviously white run where you will be spending a stupid amount of time throughout the course of the game it's quaint it's nice it has got some storage options with all the chests and the wardrobes and up top you've got a little decent master bedroom but that is it there's no actual direct forge you have to go outside and use the one across the way okay i guess that's a good reason there is a home or area for your house carl lydia of course but for a few thousand more gold you could go and buy tundra homestead just outside whiterun which has infinitely got much better attributes let me know why you love this one so much okay we're in the top five now and it's the shadow foot sanctum a cc content that's available in rifton hands down one of the worst entrances out of all of the homes you have to go through some sewers to eventually unlock or get through to a crafting area where you can craft armor and weapons good plus point but it's just so horrible the rest of it even to get into this place you need to dive into the water if you want to get out quick and easy but once you look past that inside you do have a small compact little home perfect for a thieves roleplay or rogue kind of character the initial rooms haven't got too much to cry home about a few display cabinets a cooking area with oven and at least these bedrooms are separated from the kids ones one thing i really like about this place is it has some of the open cupboards which you don't see often in the rest of the game small kids or followers room as well so you can park them next door and this is really what it's about having a whole area much like the chill wind cabin or the blood chill cabin i should say it's got everything you need inside including the alchemy lab and enchanting table and racks and racks full of your hopeful hordes now a lot of these items are named there is a few racks that you can just put general stuff and it does contain places for your actual dragon claws as well as all the rest of the stuff too but it does have a generous amount of the mannequins and they're pretty much all in one place also this is kind of what i really love about this area i do also like the fact that it's got a specialist area for the thieves guild questline items too and being in riften you're going to be able to access a bunch of the merchants and stuff to sell some of your stolen goods that you might not have done or make it a bit quick and easy until you get the perk it costs 7500 gold and you need to buy it from the actual thieves guild bar and I guess it really is this room that elevates the rest of this home. It's about having everything all in one spot. And that's what I really like. And I'm guessing you lot really like too. But yeah, for sure. The entranceway could have done with a little bit more love. We know thieves skulk around. But they really deserve to be coming in and out of a sewage pipe? I think not. So number four is Tundra Homestead with a massive amazing view of obviously Dragon Reach, mountains and beautiful farms all across. It is absolutely one of my favourite locations to actually be and take in the environment. Much preferable to Breeze Home for me and obviously you guys agree too. It also does have some additional benefits that Breeze Home doesn't and this really makes this the one to go for rather than going through or spending your gold on Breeze Home. A forge and smelting area outside crop plots and farming area outside as well as a whole host of farms nearby with the added benefit of an apron. One thing it lacks is a proper stable but we'll forgive that because this place although a bit more expensive in gold to buy outright comes fully furnished. Oven cook pot check in fact a bit of a unique oven it's actually just a hot plate. Plenty of storage for books although you do have to share your bedroom with their noisy kids just tell them to put the blanket over their eyes when you get Lydia alone. It really is like a micro mini home packed to the rafters with decorations and all sorts of places to put your gotten loot. The adjacent room that leads to the basement has your crafting needs in terms of alchemy and enchantment. I think it's fairly easy to see why this was rated over Breeze Home and so many of the others. It just comes with so much more of the crafting stations you need. When you go downstairs, you've got a little entranceway, which feels a bit wasted, but you've got a decent area here with lots of weapon racks. Again, plenty of space for your dragon claws and just a really, really nice condensed area. One thing I don't like as much is the big display units in the middle. I prefer the smaller ones on the side, but it has got some unique properties as well. Also having the masks as well as places for your jars and other bits. It doesn't have the biggest amount of weapon racks though and certainly the mannequins you will find more in some of the other creations but as one of your starter homes that you'll probably have enough gold to get after a few missions while running around white run if you hadn't gone looting every single piece it's absolutely worthy and it doesn't take much to actually unlock either 
So definitely for beginners in Skyrim, this should be absolutely one of your first buys as a home. As I said, with its proximity to farms nearby, you'll never want for any of the crops, especially in survival when you're making cabbage soup. And we can all take a little trip to the bar and the Hunnery Brewery. And of course, it's in the shadow of Whiterun, so you'll always be able to go and trade some goods, and you're pretty close to Riverwood as well. I think number four is just about right for this one. It's nice location and the fact that you can grow crops just about outdoes the Thieves Shadowfoot Sanctuary. When I first came across my watch, I wasn't impressed by its location. I felt it was just a bit dingy and horrible being in a bog, but I've come to really appreciate this magnificent tower in the middle of nowhere. Guarded by a Chorus, and you'll have to use a fire spell to gain access to it. It is another creation content, and it's also free once you get here, as long as you can indeed kill that Chorus. Bring on the 10 comments that said it's actually Chorus, not Chorus. But yeah, I love this one. I think this is well worthy of being in the top five, absolutely. And it has got a couple unique features. It's another unique location for enchanting your staves or staves, as well as having a all forge. Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think any other home has one of these, which means that you can craft even more, namely the Nord armor and hero sets. When it comes to the inside, you've got a circular area filled with luxuries to sit and admire, a lovely enchanting atmosphere, if a little bit dark at times. As is standard with CC homes, you have a oven as well as obviously a cook pot and plenty of places for you and your followers to also have a little bit of a kip. Lots of space for books and of course lots of chests to hide all of your ill-gotten gains or your various magical items. And then we do come into the second chamber or the top chamber that you go through the glowing portal. This is where you'll find the Staff Enchanter. The only other location of one of these is in the other CC house at Bloodchill Manor. And of course, if you go to Solheim, you'll be able to craft one at Mirror It's got the forge, as I mentioned, and as I said, this is a all one. So I feel like this should have been added to maybe Hendraheim or just anywhere else, basically, maybe even the Dwarven home, rather than something more magical. I feel like smithing belongs with warriors. That said, I guess a mage would be able to maybe imbue his smithing so that he'd be able to craft whatever he wanted. It does also come with some growing plots, so no particular farm fields, but plenty for you to use here. And I guess it's only let down is it doesn't maybe have as many mannequins as some of the other places. They're actually displayed nicely. I prefer the way that sometimes they're here just adjacent to some of these weapon racks, but there's no real big concentration of them. Also, a lot of these weapon racks are specific use weapons. There are some generic ones, of course, and we do also benefit from the same display units for jars, as well as your dragon claws and various other special items like the masks. A great find to get early on in the game, really give you a chance to get some materials that you might not have access to straight away. Good few display units and it does have weapon racks all around the central little wall here as well. And of course it does have its own alchemy and enchanting tables too. I'm so glad you guys voted this in the top three. I personally think it should have been at least number two, possibly even number one. Maybe the only negative, particularly if you're playing in survival, is the closest town is Morfall, and then you've got Dawnstar and maybe a little bit of solitude. But it's still fairly north, and I would say it's quite hard to get here and then traverse all the way across the map if you need to go to Riften or anywhere like that. But again, this is still closer to a major town where you'll be able to get a car to take you than some of the other places. If I was a mage, I'd have this one and the Blood Chill Manor as absolutely my two go-tos. I may disagree about this one being number two, but I can't disagree with that view. It is absolutely stunning. Nestled in the hills and mountains of Skyrim, being able to look upon such great sights, including a waterfall to the left and a huge giant castle keep on the right. Hendraheim is a fantastic location, that's for sure. If a little bit hard to get to, especially in survival mode, and not particularly close to too many cities, I am struggling to see why this has been voted so highly. Maybe it is that roleplay as a battle-weary Viking, a true Norse Skyrimmer. I know I messed up the words there, as usual. I do have issues with some of these, I ain't gonna lie. But, undoubtedly, it has got some plus points. It does come equipped with a fully working forge. You can obviously go and craft and make whatever you want. Again, this is where I feel like it would have benefited from having the whole all forge. 
The pathway leading up to the house is fantastic if you can find it, if a little bit hard. It would have been nice to have a proper stable nearby as well instead of just the kind of straw mats. But the entranceway once you get inside it opens up into a proper traditional feasting hall and it is pretty fantastic. I do love the fact also it's got some mannequins as soon as you step through the door you can tell what your favourite or showpiece armour sets will be as you'll have them display up here I am sure and it's really got some really nice details. All the amenities, cooking, a bar, obviously the pots and baking are all there on a proper open hearth fire. I also like the fact that it's got the enchanting and obviously the alchemy right next to each other too. The main wall of the top floor here really shows off your best armour pieces and weapons. There's only one major bedroom on this place, you will be sharing the rest of your room with Lydia or the kids, but at least there's somewhat of a little divider in between. It is extremely cramped, I guess it really is about showing off the feasting hall up the top in the middle here. So nothing massively special though compared to some of the homes, so it's got to be this location. It's a small yet tight little area to show off again even more and combined with the mannequins upstairs it does offer more than you'll find in somewhere like the Tundra homestead. There's also some extra weapon racks upstairs that make it at least match that or maybe give a bit more providence to it. There's also more space I do believe for some of the named items, especially if you're in the companions you'll find a lot of quest items I think that will belong here and it has got the obligatory showcase of your dragon claws and jars. I think all the creations were pretty much great, they do offer early game much bigger benefits than you'll find in some of the vanilla homes and I actually am surprised we haven't seen too many of the actual Herfire homes being mentioned, I guess they're just too long to upgrade and get all the goods for them to make them that way, especially considering that some of them now have fisheries in which you can house all of your fish from the new fishing free DLC as well. But yeah, considering that it's a great little location to have lots of things on display, but with no all forge, with no in staff enchanter or anything else to make it special, and somewhat, like I said, in the middle of nowhere, with the closest towns being Markarth or Whiterun, or maybe even Falk Reef, it is a bit of a pain to get to. But that's what a vote is. You guys voted it as number two. So let me know in the comment section why you voted it as one of your favourites. And of course that leaves number one as the Golden Hills Plantation. I kind of maybe should have left this off the list or said you can't include it because it is going to be everyone's number one because it generates so much gold. If somehow you don't know about this it is a creation club piece of content, it's part of the farming creation stuff and basically allows you to grow certain crops and if you grow the right ones you can rake in between 10 and 20 thousand gold easily every single day. The quest for it involves you reuniting a family of ghosts and pretty much you'll be given the keys to it, although it will cost you a bit to upgrade eventually and you'll have to find yourself a house coal as well as some farming hands to help, but it is a good small little area. It's got a nice little bedroom upstairs, I'll bet it could have done with a lot more weapon racks to shove some of your goods. This is somewhere that you'll buy purely just to make you gold, but you won't necessarily live here every day. For alchemists and potion makers, of course, it is even more better that you'll be able to grow exactly what you want to get the best kind of potions. And once you upgrade to the livestock, you can get as much milk, eggs, and whatever else you want. You do get a choice to also upgrade certain rooms, and you can add an apiary to it as well. It is a proper farm. You have got lots of plots to grow your goods. And as I said, you can come and collect your gold, as well as the resources that get generated from these in a special pantry in the cellar. You've even got stables that you can also unlock and upgrade as well as a farmhand house for that true roleplay experience and maybe occasionally going in and stealing a few apples or loaf of bread. A mill to grind up your wheat into flour and get yourself a few goats too. For adventurers that maybe took too many arrows to the knee and are thinking of retirement, I think this is probably going to be one of the best ones. When you do eventually go downstairs, you will find an area that you can actually have as your alchemy lab and here's the pantry where you gather all your goods. They'll get deposited in here automatically every single day and you can chop and change whatever you want. It does not have enough stands for armour or your weapons though and this is why it's kind of a place that you'll come purely just to start up your gold making farm rather than anything else. It does have an enchanting table down here as well. Talk to your dude who runs it and that can be whoever you want and look how much gold I've got in about maybe 20 days. 
It's near Rorikstead, so you can go ahead and do a bit of trading occasionally, but it is in the middle of nowhere in terms of purely survival. That would probably be the only negative I could really say about this place. It's just to the left of the centre of the map, so not too far from Whiterun or Markov, but you've got a fair few mountains and streams to get to. It's very close to Hendraheim, and that could be a good little duo to have. Even if you're someone that's never been bothered about making potions or doing any of the farming life, then it's still going to be worthy of doing this just to get that gold. And that's why you guys have voted it. That's why I should have maybe said you can't choose this one. Overwhelmingly, you guys have said this is the best time to live in. Of course, functionality wise, then yeah, it's going to offer you the most gold, the most rare resources to make your own actual potions and a good opportunity to come here and craft whatever weapons and items you need on your path to the actual show homes nearby. You can move your followers in and you can also have a room for the kids or you can make it into a library or another couple mannequins chucked in to show off some of your items. There we go, that's what you guys voted for. Hopefully we'll do this again with armor sets in the future and give me some other ideas about what other top 10s you'd like me to see cover. If you haven't discovered some of these or you want more help in unlocking them or finding the quest for them, I have done individual videos for every single one. So go and check them out as well as all the other homes that were newly added. I'm going to rest my knee and I'll see you rat bags later.